Our next speaker before we take the infamous beer break is Cole Chen. In addition to being the playwright in residence here at ATP, Cole is also a performer, documentary theater maker, a and a community advocate. This year, he's writing a play about mixed martial arts and the making of a documentary about temporary foreign workers living in Brooks, Alberta. Right Please join me in giving Cole the warm welcome. Sorry, I just want to say what uh, I was just thinking backstage, what a privilege it is and what a humbling experience it is for me to follow five such like uniquely inspiring Calgarian women. Uh, six, six, seven, six and seven counting Justine and Vanessa. So uh, this is a real treat. Let's get them a round of applause. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is my house. Um, it's in Highland Park. Uh, along the block next to my house are houses just like this, bung uh, bungalows with basement suites. And behind it is uh, center, uh, center Street, and then there are schools and houses and the beautiful Confederation Park and million dollar infills. And it's a very cozy, happy residential street. But across, whoa, ah, ah, across the street is this. When you turn your back on my house, you look across and you see uh, uh, an industrial park. The street in front of my house is this weird kind of borderland between residential and industrial, and, and steps away are junkyards and body shops and an elk processing plant uh, <laughs> and, and, and warehouses. And then right across the street is this. Uh, 20 steps from my door, I counted, the sidewalk ends. <laughs> and this abrupt end, you could say, is, is like a planning fail. But I don't think it is a planning fail. I think this is public planning doing exactly what it's intended to do. And it's intended to say, like, no, 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 no. This is industrial, not for strolling. But that's an intention that I, that I ignore every morning, very happily. Because uh, every morning, I leave my house and, and I take a, a long walk, uh, usually before the sun is up. And I do so and I stroll through the alleys where I see this, or along the shoulders of the streets. And, and I've grown to really love this weird borderland neighborhood of mine, so today I'm going to uh, take you on a bit of a tour of it. Now, uh, there's no beautiful parks in my neighborhood, but there is this. Uh, there is uh, the Highland Golf Park, the abandoned, cordoned off Highland Golf Park. Uh, uh, the, the golf park has been, had, had many years of controversy over what the redevelopment is going to look like. For now, it looks like this. Uh, and it's very quiet in the mornings. Uh, and I, I wander around it, uh, usually in the morning, and I, I can't stop myself from thinking that, like, oh man, does my community ever need some green public space? And, and I understand that golf courses are not technically public space, but they are a, a space that people come and perform this public act in. But for now, it is a fenced off green space in my community. But if you know where the holes in the fences are, like I do, <laughs> you can sneak in and, and take a little morning walk around. Now, these <laughs> things, are sitting on a fairway in the golf course. And, and I don't know much about golf, but I don't know otherwise what these possibly could be doing there. <laughs> Other than someone once had a job of moving these big things and then quit that job. <laughs> and so now they're like these monuments, these rusting monuments to the, the desperately needed green space I need in my community. Now, I'm not the only one who walks around because you see these uh, abandoned caddy shacks that are in the process of being rebuilt up by someone. And I, I've seen some of these guys because you realize that someone is making this into a place of their own. Someone sleeps there. And, and at least for someone, this is their summer home. So it makes me happy that at least someone's taking it back. Now, back on the street. This is Gino's, uh, Gino's shoe repair. Gino is an octogenarian Italian cobbler. And uh, once after fixing my wife Ellen's boots, he gave me a very convincing lecture on the sins of tucking your uh, jeans into your boots rather than cuffing them on the outside, like the proper way, the Gino way. But what I really love about Gino's is that it's also his house. Gino's modern shoe repair is located in what, what should have been the parlor of someone's 1950s bungalow. And if my whole neighborhood is an example of, of uh, residential and industry butting up against each other, well, for Gino, that line between living and commerce is the door sill of his kitchen. A couple blocks away is this. This is the Center Street Church. 
It is one of the, the city's largest places of worship. It's, it's huge. It's uh, bigger than most college or many college campuses in Calgary. And every Sunday morning, I see thousands of people drive past my house to go worship and, and, and enjoy some fellowship. And then, 130 steps away <laughs> is this. This is the Sweet Spa Men's Spa. Now, before, before you get ahead of me, I know what you're thinking. And everything that you imagine happens in a men's spa is happening behind <laughs> these walls. And I know this. I know this, not from experience, I promise you. But because my wife and I walked past this and we got curious and so we started Googling. And we discovered that there are entire user review sites for places like this, like a very dirty Yelp, that, <laughs> that will list every service on offer at exactly what it costs. Uh, but, but beyond that, uh, this is my favorite place in my neighborhood. This is the Calgary Pigeon Racing Club. The Calgary Pigeon Racing Club, it's a real place. I stumbled across this place and had no idea what racing pigeons were, but I was so fascinated, I started Googling. Uh, so, so this is what I know. The Calgary Pigeon Racing Club was founded in 1904, and pigeon racing is an ancient sport that, that essentially, taking, uh, essentially takes trained pigeons and releasing them, and then they fly straight home at a very calculate, and they measure the distance and the time. Uh, it's been described as a sport with one starting line and a thousand finishing lines. Now, now uh, uh, the men and women who train these pigeons, so good, are called fanciers. <laughs> a lot of uh, time and dedication and resources, um, but uh, the other thing uh, I've realized in my research is that for thousands of years, thousands of years, people have been racing <coughs> pigeons, but no one knows how it works. No one knows how a pigeon gets home. There's been a lot of theories that have been disproven that include um, theories about uh, uh, pigeons' innate ability to map the terrain they fly over and then compass home or uh, use of the magnetic fields of the world, or infrasound, low sound waves, but, but no one actually knows how it happens. All they know is that somewhere deep in a, a, a pigeon's DNA, there's something calling them back to their home at the outset of every flight. And, and it's that that I, that I think about every morning as I walk home, and that's a really nice thing to meditate on every morning. Um, you know, as the sun's coming up and, and folks are heading to work, or, or maybe coming home from a uh, coming home from a midnight shift, and as I start to turn towards my house, towards my my wife and my two year old or two month old baby Maggie, I, I think about you know what what continues to what continues to draw us all back to the the places that we land. And, and maybe there's something there that we don't understand about ourselves. What what takes us there? You know, whether it's the the mega church that you pray at, or, or the sex parlor where you pay for it, we all have a coop that is very special to us. So thank you very much for, for uh, letting me share my neighborhood. I, I think I think it's really important that we continue to try to make our neighborhoods more accessible. Uh, but the reality is is that no matter. Um, uh, you know, none of our or not all of our neighborhoods are going to make those best of lists uh, that magazines publish, and we're not all going to live there. But just because your neighborhood isn't considered walkable, that doesn't mean a really exciting, fascinating place that's teeming with life isn't discoverable. So thank you all for your time. Thanks.